Do you guys remember Captain N, the Game Master? <laughs> it's like this 90s kid in a room not dissimilar from our own here. Whoa! I'm getting sucked into the game! Oh, the terrible VR. Oh, the dog jumped in too. And then he became Captain N, the Game Master. This is a show that I think I, were only, I only ever saw a couple times as a kid, actually. Um, but uh, the few times I did catch it on TV, I really liked it. As a kid, I feel like TV was so much more magical. Like, you turn it on on Saturday mornings, and sometimes you would see a show you'd never heard of before, watch an episode, love it, it would end. You wouldn't even know when it was coming back, what it was called, anything. These days, I feel like on the internet, you can basically just look up uh, whatever you want. So it's it's definitely better. You know, I I, I kind of have an issue when people say like, "Oh my God, it was so much better." You know, kids in the in the eighties, it was so much better for them. Let's be honest. It's like there's so many things nowadays that are better than they were in the eighties, right? Like, come on, don't don't have rose tinted glasses that. You know, having a smartphone is somehow the worst thing in the world for a kid. It's probably got a ton of advantages. Uh, there are some cons. I'm not naive to that. But all I'm saying is, like, it's not like, you know, because some things have changed, they're necessarily bad. But I will say it is different for kids. And as someone who grew up uh, in a different time, you know, like, I, I do pine for those old days. So it's like, I understand the sentiment that things were better. But I kind of think, if I'm being totally honest, I think things are probably better these days for kids than they were in our day. But I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Guys, we're not here to talk about such political issues. It is our Nesmus special still. Look at this beautiful Christmas snowman and stuff. Various other things. Various other winter-themed stuff going on. Like my Marty McFly skateboard here. It's uh, pink like a hoverboard. Which is exactly the way that I wanted it to be. Um, it's just the default skateboard you get in the Emu VR emulator that we're using here. I didn't pick it, but one thing I'd like to see happen with this emulator in future is the ability to like customize furniture and stuff. Because right now the bookshelves, the dressers, all that. I mean, the chair you can take in and out of the the emulator if you want. You can add TVs and all sorts of stuff systems, but you can't change the base furniture. It would be nice to do that, and also the posters. You can you can put whatever poster picture you want in, but for instance, this wall always has three posters like this. It'd be cool if you could just like literally put whatever posters you wanted up. I don't know how far any of that stuff will come in the future. Frankly, I'm just grateful to have the emulator as we've got it here um, today. But today we are going to be playing... I forgot. Oh, WWF. WrestleMania. Yes! This was a patron recommendation. Look at Hulk Hogan. He's like, this shirt can't contain the Hulkster. Doesn't even have abs. Doesn't need him. He was an 80s rock star, man. Well, he was an 80s wrestler. Not an 80s rock star. You guys know what I mean. Anyway, okay, I'm just trying to rotate the cartridge there for no reason. Let's go ahead and grab this one out. Last time we played Parodius, but we're all done with that. So to the shelf of random games you return, Parodius. Today... We're getting our wrestling on with the mania. There we go. Turn it on. And into the world we go. Oh, wait, is it not on? There it is. On we go. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> it's just like a dude with a handlebar mustache who looks like he should be a trucker, ripping his clothes off, and you hope he stops at the underwear, but you don't know, because he's crazy. And, uh, yeah. So, WrestleMania here, um, you know, we did all our voting on polls and stuff, and a number of games got selected. One of the games that one of the patrons recommended, because they gave patrons special picks, was WWF WrestleMania. And I remember playing some of these wrestling games, uh, back in the day myself. I'm just gonna adjust my height here to get rid of a little bit of the glare. There we go. Um, I definitely played some of these wrestling games myself. So when I was a kid, my mom worked. And uh, so between the hours of like three and five or six, uh, after school, me and my brother always went to babysitters. And oftentimes the babysitters would have Nintendos because it'd be like somebody else who had kids. And sometimes there'd be another kid or two that got watched with us. So it was usually kind of fun. Like you got to hang out at someone else's house 
play with their toys, play with their video games, all that stuff. And um, so, yeah, for... Uh, I remember playing a WrestleMania game at, at uh, one of these kids' houses after school, and I was never very good at it, um, but I liked it. And I remember WrestleMania, everyone talked about it at school. I never... I don't know if I was allowed to watch it or not. I never asked to watch it at home. I wasn't super into wrestling. Um, but I did sort of still like that stuff. It's kind of weird, even though I wasn't really into it. But, uh, oh, how many players can you have in this? Is this a game that uses the multi-tap? Or will this just create a bunch of, uh... Um... A bunch of, like, random... AI people will be just J. I was going to try and be like the J maniac or something, but there's not enough room. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I find it so funny when the erase button is called rub. Rub that letter out for me, if you will. Yeah, it wants a second controller for this, so... Um, I'll listen to that song. I am a real American. <laughs> That's so funny. All right, let's reset our NES here. Um, hello? Reset? There you go. Turn back on. Alright, so we can only do one player here. Yeah! Oh, that's... Got a little gross there, but... Bigger, better, badder. Alright, let's just do a standard, uh... Wrestle. And let's be... J-Bones. J-Bones, the wrestler. Oh, it just barely fits. J-Bones. And select your wrestler. The Million Dollar Man. Oh, man, I remember these guys, sort of. Bam Bam. I don't remember him as much. Honky Tonk. Oh, yeah. Randy Macho Man Savage. He was, I think, my favorite wrestler. Manager Elizabeth. We might be the Macho Man. Andre the Giant from Princess Bride fame, of course. Manager Bobby the Brain. <laughs> Hulk Hogan, of course. Of course, and the Million Dollar Man. I kind of want to be Macho Man Randy Savage. He's, in fact, uh, he was in the first Spider-Man movie. The, uh, the, whatchamacallit, the Sam Raimi film. Did we not select him? What happened? I thought I selected him. Um, where is he? Select. Oh, select your opponent. Oh! <laughs> Macho Man versus Macho Man. They cloned him just so he could fight himself. Oh, God. Yes, take him to town, buddy. Okay, this is not the wrestling game that I remember playing. This is one of the earlier ones, I think. I think I played one of the later ones. Um, I remember playing one that I think had, like, a battle royale where you could have, like wrestlers like all in the are they playing like the wedding song randomly <laughs> or no it's the the graduation song you're graduating from kick-ass university oh man i'm just getting pummeled here i think i'm just done uh yeah we just macho man beat macho man well done and he graduated from he got he got a bachelor's in arts at the same time based on that music. Um, yeah, so the, the wrestling game that I played, the WrestleMania game that I played, was a little more advanced than this. I know they made wrestling games like sports games where they would always make another one every year or two, but I found that these wrestling games felt quite a bit different from each other. Um, I don't know if they were different enough. I've often said, you know, for sports games, the reason I never got into too many of them is it sort of felt like once you played one, I didn't see as big a difference between the next one. Whereas, like, for Mario, for some reason I did, but look at Mario 1, 2, and 3. Yeah, there are differences, and certainly Mario 3 is a really, really good game, and I love Mario 2, but they are kind of all the same game, so my criticism that all sports games are the same is probably, like, probably someone could just turn around and be like, but you like Mario, man, and all Mario games are the same. Or, you like Halo, and all Halo games, you know, Halo 3, ODST, Halo Reach, they're all very similar. So I could see someone not into those games, not seeing a difference, so... Um, okay, this time, let's be the Hulkster. We'll be the Hulkster, and now we select your opponent. 
The Hulkster wants to go up against... The Honky Do I love this I Am A Real American song in the background. It's great. It's like so 1980s wrestling. I think It's Always Sunny did an episode where they were wrestling for the troops. And they played the like, I am a real American song there. And they even had the guy from They Live, uh, what's his name? The, he was an actual wrestler. I'm blanking on his name at the moment. Uh, but he did a great job in that show. He's very funny. It's Always Sunny is a, is a show that, um, I was thinking about recently. Like, okay, shows, comedy shows that Jay enjoys. It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, uh, Rick and Morty, Kenny vs. Spenny. Probably not many of you know that. If you do, you're cool in my books. Um, uh, okay, what other shows? Oh, Smiling Friends, that's a new one. And also YOLO by, uh, the guy who made Smiling Friends. Smiling Friends and YOLO are animated shows by this hilarious Australian guy. They kind of remind me of, like, Ren and Stimpy meets Rick and Morty meets just madness. And it's awesome. Um... But here's the interesting thing. All those comedy shows, I understand if not all you like. I think a more common comedy taste are like The Office, Parks and Rec. You know, like sort of the uh, the funny, but sort of, I would say, more mainstream comedies. I like more of the fringe stuff myself. That stuff is just where I find myself laughing the most. Um, 30 Rock is another show, and Kimmy Schmidt are two shows that really make me, like, bust a gut sometimes, because they have just such random, demented jokes. I, I love it. Um, but, uh, I was thinking recently, I'm like, you know what's, I guess, a little sad in my life? Is that, like, I have a bunch of friends, but they are all, like, you know, uh, The Office, Parks and Rec, Seinfeld, Friends, people. I love Seinfeld, by the way. It's a classic. But... Uh, it's, I wouldn't consider it as fringe as, like, It's Always Sunny. It's Always Sunny is, like, some people like it and some people hate it, can't stand it. But, like, my comedy tastes, like, not a ton of my friends share them. It, it, it's kind of interesting. So it's like, when I watch It's Always Sunny or when I watch Smiling Friends or when I watch, you know, Rick and Morty or whatever, it's like, I generally watch those shows alone because, like, nobody wants to watch them with me. But, like, if... I sit down to watch, you know, if if my friends are in a room and they're watching The Office, I'll watch an episode with them. Um, and it's usually funny, but it's one of those things where it's like, I just, my fringe comedy tastes don't connect with too many people that I personally know. It's kind of weird. So, I don't know. I don't know if you guys have things like that where you have, like, a show where you're like, this show is the best, I love the show, and literally no one you know uh, agrees with you. You know, like, no one you know is just, like, in love with that show the way you are. I don't know if that's common or if that's just me. Maybe I need new friends, guys. Anyway. Uh, we lost as the Hulkster, by the way, which is sad news. But now we're going to give the Hulkster a chance to win. We are going up against... It's Andre the Giant versus the Hulkster. And I, I cannot figure these controls out. <gasps> these are just so random. I'm like trying to press buttons and my guys don't do anything. Like I'm just getting smacked in the face, man. And Andre the Giant's a big guy, like... I think if he were to actually try and fight most people, he probably would have just easily like crushed them. Obviously wrestling... Okay, let's get out of the way now. Wrestling is fake. It is fake in the sense of like... You know, if, if you watch a hockey game, it's not predetermined who's going to win or what even the rounds are going to be like. For a hockey game, it is it is an actual sports match. For wrestling, it's, it's staged, it's planned, it's scripted. Um, and I think for a long time that might have... Oh, I kicked him in the nuts. Well, it might have been one of the reasons why, even as a kid, I wasn't super into wrestling. And I sort of thought, like, why do people want to watch this? It's totally scripted. Meanwhile, I'm watching shows that are scripted, but that seems okay. Um, but I think the thing that really made me appreciate wrestling, oddly enough, was the Netflix show Glow. Um, that was a that was a great show. I really enjoyed that. Such a shame it got canceled and it will never get its final season, uh, which basically means the story was left unfinished. But, you know, at least uh, my favorite season of that show was the first season anyway, so uh, we, we'll always have that. But yeah, the Glow is a show about a female wrestling team, and the, one of the main characters is a woman trying to be an actress, and 
Tamagotchi also has a low opinion of wrestling and stuff, but it's like they do it because they need a job, but then they all sort of start to discover the the fun and the and the and the athleticism behind wrestling. So I guess I always thought in my head wrestling is planned out, it's scripted, it, you know, or at least broadly scripted. It's not like every pers- detail is figured out. There's improv and stuff in it too, but generally, like who's going to win certain matches is more or less. You know, figured out ahead of time. We lost, by the way. But I always thought because it's scripted, it's not a sport. But I would say it's performance athleticism, having like watched Glow and developed a new appreciation for what wrestlers actually do. It is very physical. And the moves they're doing, yes, they're choreographed generally, but it's not in the same way that they would choreograph a move if they're like doing a movie or something where it's like, Everything pauses, they do the move, then they reset, and it's done. It's like you have to, like, improv choreograph on the fly. And it's quite interesting to see the behind... We'll be Bam Bam this time. It's quite interesting to see the behind the scenes of, like, uh, how they do this, how they come up with it, how they practice, um, and then, like, how they do their stories and all this stuff. And, like, it's like I just... After watching Glow, I was like, you know what? I think I was wrong about wrestling. I think... It's way more interesting than it seems. Um, the stories um, are... Oh, look, I'm doing, like, crazy flips. That's cool. Uh, the stories do have more going on and stuff. Um, and there is a lot of athleticism here. I was just writing off, so... Um, that said, I think the thing closest to wrestling that I really did like as a kid, and I've talked about this before, was American Gladiators. I love American Gladiators. The original American Gladiators from the 80s and 90s, uh, that show is cool, man. And you know what's interesting about that show is it sort of has elements of wrestling. Like, it has these gladiators who have, like, these crazy names and personalities and stuff. But it definitely is not sort of performance in the same way that wrestling is. It's it's definitely, like, contenders and gladiators trying to compete. And on any given match, it's purely about skill. And, and, and they really do, you know, try and do the things that they're doing on the show. So... Um, I think, you know, at the time, because I, I, I sort of had this view of wrestling because it's a performance, it's it's not real, it's not interesting as a kid, American Gladiators is like what I enjoyed as wrestling, where it was like, sort of like wrestling and with the personalities and, and stuff, but it was just more of an actual contest, which is what I wanted to watch if I was going to watch one of these things. I think we just lost again. Jeez, we suck at this game. Um... But yeah, American Gladiators is great. Funnily enough, it had Hulk Hogan in the reboot in the early 2000s, which I was less crazy about. They they definitely, like, lost some of the spirit that made the original American Gladiators cool, I think. Um, but anyway. Um, we keep losing at this game, and I'm just rambling about other stuff, so let's just do one more match. Um, let's try a tournament, actually. I mean, I guess for a tournament... I meant to type in J, and I started to type in Ray, and we're gonna go with it. Ray Bones! We're gonna be the Million Dollar Man, why not? Uh, against Bam Bam. We're gonna lose. I, I'm terrible at this. I, I can't figure out the controls for the life of me. I'm trying. But anyway, this is just a bunch of wrestling show matches, as it turned out. Oh, look, I can punch. One thing I can do consistently. Okay, let's see if we can just... Maybe you can just spam a basic move, and you can win that way? Like, let's see if this works. <laughs> Come on, buddy, you want some? Um... Forget what I was even talking about. I guess I'm just terrible at this game, yes, that that's what I was... ...talking about. Come on. It definitely seems like the AI is worse. Maybe maybe in the, the normal contest, the AI is better or something. Oh god, okay, I can't- I, I'm definitely gonna lose this. Whoa. I think in some of the other wrestling games, you can A, climb up on the, uh, the ropes here, and you can B, go out of the ring and stuff. Like, this feels like one of the first wrestling games ever made on NES. Which is like early days, you know, like the screen doesn't scroll, the entire thing is just one screen, and... Wrestling would get far more sophisticated, but... Jesus, we're down already. Well... Um, it was fun 
checking out wrestling and chatting with you guys about memories of wrestling, American Gladiators, comedy shows we like or dislike, and things people won't watch with us. <laughs> all right, well, we just lost. That's okay, though. It's all part of the Nesmus experience. It's coming in, hanging out on our beds, looking out at the Christmas joy, the Christmas cheer that fills our hearts. Guys, uh, ooh, the stars even kind of fit with the Christmas theme. Oh, they went away now. Actually, even that screen, look at this. Yeah, sometimes I just like looking at the games from a distance in this emulator. It's just cool to, like, see them off there. Uh, we can even turn off the lights. Ooh. Yeah, the, I feel like the carpet and the ceiling make me feel like I'm in a bowling alley. <laughs> Although the furniture makes it feel like a bedroom, but... Um, guys, I hope you had fun in this Nesmus episode. Again, WrestleMania was a patron pick, and, uh, I was terrible at it. Probably wouldn't play this one again, because I don't know, can't figure out the controls, but it does make me kind of want to now go and play some of those other NES wrestling games that I played. Oh my god! <gasps> a poster! Poster 18 goes here. Size doesn't matter. Guys, you know what I just realized? We can put one more poster up. What are we gonna put up? It'll be an Esmus mir It's an Esmus Miracle! Um, so the way this emulator works is there's poster spots all over the room. And I thought I filled them all up, but poster 18 never got a poster. That means we are lucky enough to be able to add one. I will figure something out good for the next one. And, uh, yeah. Um, I hope you guys had fun, and, uh, we will catch you in the next one. Until then, my friends, take care of yourselves. And peace. Oh, you son of a bitch. Oh, that's creepy. That is so creepy. I love this Easter egg, by the way. I put in a VHS tape here. I wanted to play something festive for you guys to open today's episode. Instead, I got uh, the ring tape. Which means I will die in seven days. Oh, man, this... If you haven't seen The Ring, it's definitely a good, uh, good scary movie to go check out. Anyway, I probably should stop creeping you guys out, uh... Oh, God. Creeping you guys out over, uh, over the holidays here. Oh, God. Okay, I'm not even gonna use this. This is a bonus. If you're watching this, you're a patron. Ugh, <laughs> gross. A box of twitching fingers, of course. And what else is on this tape? I kind of want to know what happens at the end of this tape. That's creepy, too. It's a random ladder. And... Yeah, it's creepy, too. The ring. Well, you know what we were supposed to be watching? Was, um... Let's see here. Oh my god! Do I have a phone in the room? My phone is ringing. Holy shit. <laughs>